ತತ್ಸವಿತೂವರೇಣ್ಯಂ ವರ್ಕೋ ದೇವಸ್ಯಧೀಮಹೀ ಿನಾ 
अष्ट भजोत के महावीर भगवान यशु भजो सौराष्ट्र भजो के महावीर भगवान साई भजो शिरडी साई भजो हे शिरडी साई भजो सत्य साई भजो हे सत्य साई भगवान सत्य भजो सत्य साई भजो हे सत्य साई भगवान सत्य भजो सत्य साई भजो हे सत्य साई भगवान सत्य भजो सत्य साई भजो सत्य साई भगवान अल्लाह भजो मौला भजो हे अल्लाह साई भगवान अल्लाह भजो मौला भजो हे अल्लाह साई भगवान राम भजो साई कृष्ण भजो हे राम कृष्ण भगवान राम भजो साई कृष्ण भजो नानक भजो गौतम भजो के बुद्ध साई भगवान नानक भजो गौतम भजो के बुद्ध साई भगवान केशु भजो जौराष्ट्र भजो हे महावीर भगवान केशु भजो जौराष्ट्र भजो हे महावीर भगवान साई भजो श्री साई भजो हे श्रीणी साई भगवान भजो श्री साई भजो हे श्रीणी साई भगवान सत्य भजो सत्य साई भजो हे सत्य साई भगवान सत्य भजो सत्य साई भजो हे सत्य साई भगवान सत्य भजो सत्य साई भजो हे सत्य साई भगवान सत्य भजो सत्य साई भजो हे सत्य साई भगवान अल्लाह भजो मौला भजो हे अल्लाह साई भगवान अल्लाह साई मौला साई Yes. 
राम कहो कृष्ण कहो ईश्वर अल्लाह साई कहो 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 बुद्ध कहो गुरु नानक कहो सौराष्ट्र महावीर येशु कहो कहो गुरु नान कहो जो राष्ट्र महावीर यीशु कहो बुद्ध कहो गुरु नान कहो जो राष्ट्र महावीर यीशु कहो राम कहो कृष्ण कहो ईश्वर अल्लाह साई कहो राम कहो कृष्ण कहो युगवतार तुम हो विश्व शक्ति तुम हो युगवतार तुम हो विश्व शक्ति तुम हो युगवतार तुम हो विश्व शक्ति तुम हो कहो ईश्वर अल्लाह साई कहो राम कहो कृष्ण कहो ईश्वर अल्लाह साई कहो बुद्ध कहो गुरु नान कहो जो राष्ट्र महावीर यीशु कहो बुद्ध कहो गुरु नान कहो जो राष्ट्र महावीर यीशु कहो राम कहो कृष्ण कहो ईश्वर अल्लाह साई कहो राम कहो कृष्ण कहो ईश्वर अल्लाह साई कहो युग अवतार तुम हो विश्व शक्ति तुम हो तुम हो साई पर ब्रह्म तुम हो साई पर ब्रह्म तुम हो राम कहो कृष्ण कहो ईश्वर अल्लाह साई कहो धर्म प्रिय देवा
बुधर नानक Oh uh-huh. 
स्वरूप साई धर्म स्वरूप साई परती के अवतारा के अवतारा मेरे बाबा मेरे साई मेरे बाबा मेरे साई आते हैं तेरे द्वारे हिंदू मुस्लिम साई आते हैं तेरे द्वारे मिलते हैं तेरे द्वारे मिलते हैं तेरे द्वारे साई राम साई राम साई राम साई राम take uh, two more uh, very one of them is quite a funny incident but these come to my mind immediately two more incidents where he sort of was trying to convey a message and the lord chooses his own style to convey a message his style is different you know one day he was sitting in the interview room suddenly 
I incidentally don't know how to sing bhajans. I incidentally don't know anything much about Vedam. Total murkha. God will accept people in spite of all deficiencies because that is his mercy. One afternoon I was sitting at his feet. Suddenly he says, Hey, how do I look to you? Swami said, Hey, hey, Kanistini. And like this, you know. This. I'm really, I, I'm, I have taken permission to narrate this from Swami directly and I am sure he will not be angry with me for this because there was a much greater message which he conveyed through this. And then I said, Swami, you are the... Suddenly I felt I should now praise the Lord to the skies. This is the only opportunity. I said, Swami, you are Parabrahma Swarupa, you are the greatest, you are the most beautiful, there is nothing that is beyond you. Hey, chai chai. How do I look to you? I said. Then I said, Swami, if you permit, I want to sing one small bhajan. So look at the audacity. Somebody who cannot sing bhajans, he is having the audacity to tell the Lord himself, who is Saraswati Sakshat, that I will sing a bhajan for you. Just look at the audacity in me. I had the guts to tell him that I will sing a bhajan for you. Ah, hello. He knew that this is an absolute Sangeeta Shunya. <laughs> but the mercy in him gave that opportunity. So I said, uh, I started singing that bhajan Sai Sundara. I, I actually don't have the guts to even sing it now because you know, there's still a lot of that ego. But I'll venture into it. I said, Sai Sundara Sundara. Cha cha cha, stop, Madhu, he said. <laughs> and I said, What is this? I am trying to put in my best and say that I can sing. And he just admonishes you like that. I didn't leave, I continued. Agram, cha cha, stop, Madhu, he said. <laughs> then I held his hand and I said, Swami, Raga Tala Ilder Bodu Bhava Ide Kele Bekni voice. And you not believe like a small kid. Haitu Bangaru Hello. And then with rapt attention, Swami heard the entire song. His eyes are closed, he's in total bliss. Total bliss. And there were, there were portions of that song as you proceed further, further where I was also crying, he was also crying, and I was looking at his face, it was becoming even more and more and more beautiful. It was, the whole face was glowing like that. And then suddenly he opens, Aita, he said, <laughs> said Swami, avakasha kutri. Then he says, Bhava idre nano avakasha kurtini. If the feeling is there which is pure, I will give an opportunity. Bhava is the key, not anything else. That feeling should be there. It was a very great message telling you it was, he chooses something to pass on some other great message to you. Similarly, Ashadi Ekadashi Day was being observed in Prashanti Nilayam, and I think the Mumbai organization which takes care of this, they had arranged for a uh, a very great music musician to sing that evening. I will not take the artist's name for obvious reasons. But um, after the entire program got over, Swami came into the interview room and called me inside. This was after Aarti, the evening. And Swami says, Hey, our songs he gito. I thought you are supposed to praise the artist, no? Because he sat through that for one hour. And at the end of it, he created some chain and all that also for that lady. So I said, Swami, yen aditru Swami, ishtu chanagi tu Swami, meera bhajanzu yen bhava, cha cha, adu kacheri, he said. Bhava ne irlila, naan aditin nodu, he said. And then he sang Payoji Mene. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, the beauty, I should use the word, the devotion, God showing devotion in his song. Mirabai was sakshat there. He was singing a few verses. He would stop, then cry, talking about Mirabai. This went on for 40 minutes. He narrated the 
troubles Mirabai went through. And he said, in spite of those troubles, she was crying out to Krishna. That bhava has to come out when you sing. A bhava bandre, nanike santosha agate, sir. And he sang, Payoji Mene, the whole song he sang. And after that, I said, Swami, you should be able to do it. You are an artist, you should be able to do it. You are an artist, you should be able to do it. Who is better? Who is better? And I said, Swami, obviously it is you only. The artist is after all your creation. Whatever you did now was to convey another message only. So, he wanted bhava. It was that inner feeling, that sincerity, that, that feeling of oneness with the Lord. Once it gets translated to actions, in word, deed and action, then obviously the Lord's grace will flow. That mellifluous grace will incessantly flow. There was another very funny incident, five minutes, yeah. where Swami, you know, he, he wanted to teach another lesson and he took a lot of pain for this. I used to take papers to Puttaparthi whenever we had to, you know, submit something to Swami or discuss about a project. I used to take them in a loose form, loose leaf, all in a folder like that. And um, Swami watched once, twice, thrice, four times, one week, two weeks, three weeks. He kept watching. Then suddenly one day he said, you should not bring papers like this. You should carry it in a bag, proper bag. So I said, I to Swami, I'll get a bag. Next day itself, Swami comes with a bag. And Swami calls inside and says, No, do, naan ninga ki bag takun mani dini. And it was a beautiful tanned color, semi, you know, beautiful like a hand briefcase, nice bag, executive bag he brings. And he says, Walak nadi. So he takes me inside. And he says, He bag it go. I said, I was so grateful to him that, you know, he gave the bag and I came out. After that, I was feeling very conscious that I am carrying, going to Bhagwan, carrying a briefcase kind of a thing. You know, you feel very awkward when you are going to Swami with a bag and all that, you know, it's like you are going to office or something. So what I would do is I would hold the bag like this and walk. And Swami saw one day, and then the second day, and I think it was coming up, something was about to burst. It was waiting to come out. Third, fourth day, you know, that grim face, he said, go in. I went in and I was shivering. He says, buddhi la ninge, he said. I said, ye naito Swami, marriage broker tara barta gya, he said. You know, Swami had a typical way of doing this. Marriage broker tara barta diya. Putte illa ninge, he said. Kutko, he said. And he was vigorously wiping his mouth. And then he said, Bag kaya litko. Hatte sali illi nadi, bag it kundu. I said, what is this? So I held the bag. And I am so conscious. Because... I didn't want to hold it like this. I mean, he will use some other term. I didn't want to hold it properly because I didn't know whether that is correct. I didn't know whether I should keep the bag on my head. <laughs> what should I do? I somehow was shaking and walking. Straight up, Nadi. And he is all the while calmly reading letters. He is sitting on the chair and reading letters. And he, occasionally he will say, Nadi, Nadi. And again he is reading. <laughs> And this is going on for about five minutes. I am going up and down the interview room, up and down, up and down, up and down. Ah, stop, Madhu. Because he had finished reading the letter. <laughs> he calls and then he says, Nodu Bangaru, bag it kondu aga, dhairya bagi, bold agi, chest to horag it kondu, head to high agit kondu, nadi beku. Ing it kondu nadi beku, nadi. Yes, Swami, and I walked. Then he says, how should you use the bag? So he opened the compartments. He says, this compartment keep all these kind of papers. This compartment keep these kind of papers. Then if you have money, put it inside the zip. Then there was a small key. So he says, you should lock the bag. 
Every time lock the bag, keep the key. You can't believe anybody here. So lock the bag and keep the key with you. He spent so much time in guiding how you should walk with a bag. And after that, I, I don't know, many of you must have probably seen me going to Puttaparthi with that bag. It was a tanned color, maroon, maroonish color bag. And every time Swami, after that, the next two, three times, you know, he will call and say, ah, bag it kondadi first to. So once you get into the interview room, the first exercise was to walk with the bag. And people would think, this guy is carrying some massive stuff in the bag. The fact was, those nevidyams which we used to take to Swami, and the papers, and actually the bag was being carried because there was a drill going on inside. <laughs> and after one month, he said, ah, ega seriyag nadita idya, in mele inda ninu bagu tagondu aramag nadi. So he spent all those sessions just to teach how to move around with a bag. To this extent, the Lord can go to drive in perfection. Because he had this penchant for perfection. For him, everything had to be immaculately done. Everything had to be done precisely. Everything had to be done in a certain manner. There was no letting up. There was no compromise at all. Everything had to be done up to a certain level of perfection. Once he got convinced that the way of holding the bag was right, he gave up. Like this. Huh? Yeah. You can go on and on and on and on and on like this. There were, there were innumerable locations which he took, I mean, to drive home points which you felt were so simple, but the Lord spent so much time trying to guide you on this. I must tell you that towards the last few months when Swami was in that mortal coil, ignorance, I think it was within us, he time and again said, Bega 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 kelsa la Swami held the idrunun in kelsa marko beko. I said, Swami, where are you going? You will always be there for us. In fact, we, we, our prayer is we should go away and leave this body even when you are still with us. Ila ila ila, Swami in Shashwatava Girtara, you must understand to lead a life based on Swami's principles. He was giving a lot of indications. He was giving a lot of rapid instructions. I remember towards the end, one very touching incident. It happened, I think, somewhere after the sports day of 2011. Suddenly, Swami one day said, where is your house? So I said, it is in Bangalore. Then he says, Mysore Ali Ilva Mane? I said, Illa Swami. Mysore Ali Mane Madu. I said, why should I have a house in Mysore? There is no need. Then he takes the trouble of identifying a land in Mysore, pushes us to buy the land in Mysore, and he says, Swami Ivaga, Matte 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 Ide Tara Matarta Ira Kagala, Nanene instructions Kortai, you know, Beg Bega Mukspudu. I said, What is the hurry? Why are we in this mad rush for what? But the, Little did we realize that the Lord was trying to usher in a certain kind of life for all of us. He was trying to tell us clearly, we didn't understand, that He is there always for us, but we will be bereft of that physical guidance probably. I feel I have had a few heart-to-heart -heart conversations with Swami about the students and their role. And I sincerely feel, I mean, every time he would talk about students' tears and the sense of pride and the sense of, you know, they being mine was always there. I feel the world is actually looking up to the students of Satya Sai. There is a great onerous responsibility on the students to lay the road ahead, to show the path, which has already been carved out by Swami. They, I think, have to get hugely involved in the mission from now. And I always will consider myself to be unfortunate to not have been a student of Bhagwan's university. But I feel I want to look up and follow the path that is going to be laid by the students. His students are the only hope for mankind. There is no other hope for mankind today other than the role which the students will play. A big initiative in this direction is already underway with the Vidyavahini program. 
but I am sure in the days, months and years to come, his students will rule the world. They will show the direction. Everybody will tame themselves and follow his students. There's a tremendous responsibility on the students. The feeling, because he has touched them, he is a part of them, directly. I don't think Swami ever spoke about my properties. The only property he said was his were his students. Finally, getting back to the topic which uh, Vidyadhar and other senior alumni gave me, I am there for you, is what he said. It is very painful. I keep asking, Swami, where are you? Now where are you? I want to see that form. I want to touch that form. I want to feel that form. I want to talk to that form. It's okay. Let people say you are physically getting attached to him. Doesn't matter. After all, such a beautiful avatar will not come again. It happened once. That will be the grandest, the most beautiful avatar that humanity has ever witnessed in, every, in any yuga. We miss him. Each one of us here misses him a lot. And the question comes, where are you, Swami, now? Why is it I'm not able to see you? But I'm steadily getting reconciled to a fact that if there is this intense craving from within, if there is that heart-to-heart -heart sort of a prayer, instantly he manifests himself. He doesn't, just as he would do when he was in that mortal coil, instantly he's there. In fact, I feel we should put our hands on our chest and say, not ask him, not say, Swami is saying, I am there for you. I think we need to ask ourselves, are we there for him? We need to be there for him to work through us. Our lives becomes his message. I think we need to raise up and we need to, because so much love, so much care, so much of guidance, I don't think any avatar ever gave. It is time for us to pull up our socks, become one. All should be one. It should all be a united effort. And we should all have one common agenda to take forward Swami's love, Swami's message on service, on love, on compassion to the whole of humanity and make the whole of humanity into one large, big Sai family. Jai Sai Ram.
Yeah. 